Hello everyone, welcome back. This is going to be CC Cycle 2 and Week 20 Memory Work, Review Game, and At Home Ideas. And this week, if you follow along with me for some time now, I am not going to be changing much from how we covered Week 20 my first time through Cycle 2. Uh, a lot of it works well, and I haven't found anything that I wanted to change since then. Uh, not anything. There are a few things that will be changed in this video, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty similar. And I hadn't been doing back then the add-ons of at-home ideas and things like that that go along with it, but hopefully this will be of some value add for this week. So we are learning in math the circumference of a circle. And I just take the back side of the same piece of paper that I used for last week to show the area of a circle, flipped it over, and on the back side I wrote out the circumference. And so we sing this to this tune. The circumference of a circle equals 2 times pi 3.14 times the radius. So you could do this with hand motions. You could go the circumference of a circle equals 2 times pi 3.14 times the radius. So number of ways you could do it. With a visual aid, I just show it and point to these things, and I'm pointing to the formula as I sing it. If you don't want to do a visual aid, you could just kind of write this on the board even, and then use your hand motions to make it physical for the kiddos if you wanted to just have them do the circumference of a circle or even just do one finger around and then show a circle. And then you do, what did I do? Oh, two times pi, 3.14 times the radius. This is an R for radius. And that is math. All right, for English, we are learning in a positive. And we sing to Lulu, skip to my Lou, and it sounds like this. And a positive is a noun or pronoun directly beside another noun that explains or identifies it. And a positive is a noun or pronoun directly beside another noun that explains or identifies it. That idea I got from Funny Cheryl years back, maybe three years ago, we did our first run through, so I'm super thankful for that. That is English. And if you wanted to make that more exciting, you could break out your silly voice cards or sticks and sing it through several times in different voices or styles. All right, for history, we are learning about the Vietnam War. And for this, last week we did shakers. This week we also have a familiar sound in the background of the tune that Cece provides. And so I thought that it would be fun for us to use little uh, tambourines and we'll do it to the beat that's there, but it also has like a beat and a clap, a beat and a clap. So we will do that in class. We will either take turns. I do have many of these little tambourines. You can get them at the dollar store. Um, but if you just have one tambourine, that would work too. And then you could have somebody come up in the front of the class. Each of the kids take turns demonstrating to the rest of the class um, while you play the tune and the whole class sings. So you could take turns with that. You could also just use the rice shakers if you have those and that's more handy. Both of those would work for this week's sound. And uh, basically we introduce the statement, have the kids repeat after you so that they can become familiar with it. And then I would recommend adding in the instruments and fun part after the kids have heard the whole statement and are comfortable with it. And then you can add in some fun pieces. Otherwise, sometimes this can be a little loud or distracting. So that's why I always recommend introducing it first so that everybody is good with it and that they can help. Because as we're playing this and going around in our circle and making it fun, I am saying, I need to hear your voices. And you don't want to just hear your voice or the parents' voices in the classroom. So um, always encourage the kids to sing as they're using those fun instruments. Okay, so that is how we're going to cover history. If you would prefer to do hand motions, like if you have older kids or you just want to do something different than a musical instrument, you can use these. These are what we used our first time through. So uh, you could do the sign for 19 and then 65. You could just do the 19. Uh, President Johnson, the sign for president is to take your hands like this and move them up like bullhorns, kind of. So President Johnson sent, you could do the sign for sent, sent U.S. troops, or you could do this for that part, just salute, to stop 
And then you could do the sign for communists, which we have been doing with our hand up to stop communist North Vietnam. So you can do a V on top, uh, up high, I mean, on top of anything in particular, just up high. So uh, North Vietnam from capturing all of South Vietnam, move your V down and then during the Vietnam War. So the song kind of repeats that um, phrase during the Vietnam War twice at the beginning and the end. And so when we do that, you can kind of take two Vs and move them side to side, kind of like we do when we do the sign for war. And those are some ideas if you wanted to use hand motions and make it more physically active. All right, for Latin, we are continuing on with our perfect tense conjugation endings. And so we do that by making the perfect sign. So just like this. And uh, sometimes I'll drop a little mouse on the board because the first sound of perfect tense is that E, E sound. So it's I, but pronounced like an E. And so I kind of jog the kids, I don't know if you would say memory or thought process by introducing it first with the mouse and what sound does a mouse, mouse make? And so we kind of have fun making the mouse sound. And then that reminds us as a visual aid that the first sound of our first conjugation endings in perfect tense is E. And then we sing it in that higher pitch mouse tune or tone. And that's kind of how we do it. So we'll sing through CC's tune. We will introduce it with the mouse to remind us that the first sound is E. And then we'll end it with uh, perfect tense with our hands in the perfect position. And that's how we'll cover Latin. For a timeline, we have Australia. So we're going to do our hands like they are jumping kangaroos. So Australia becomes a commonwealth. Then we have Mexican Revolution. So we're going to make an M with our hands. And then we're going to take those same three fingers and kind of move them down the side of our cheek as the symbol for Mexican. So Mexican, we take two R's and we're going to do a revolution, Mexican Revolution. Then we have World War. So WW1 and President Wilson. And that's another W. You could just do... Uh, World War I and President Wilson, another W, or just the sign for president. Then we have Lenin and the Bolshevik Re Revolution. And so we're going to do an L and a B for Lenin and Bolshevik Revolution. In Russia, we're going to stand up and we're going to have our hands go like this onto our hips. That is the sign for Russia. And then for U.S. evangelist Billy Graham, we are going to move our hands like this and point them out. Like we're telling everybody something like an evangelist. So U.S. evangelist, Billy, B for Billy, and G for Graham, Billy Graham. And then last but, no, not last but not least, the next one is modern period of the arts. And for that, that was a time that was characterized by a lot of individual expression. So uh, there was a little bit of randomness in the art scene. So we move our hands in the sign for random which is to just make your hands go in circular motions kind of back and forth randomly. And that is the sign for a modern period of the arts, just representing lots of individual expression. And then the last one is the Great Depression and the New Deal. And so for that, we're gonna push our hands down to represent the Great Depression and the New Deal. We do it like we're dealing out playing cards, just like that. And that is all of timeline. All right, for geography, we are learning South Central Asia. And so we will sing this to, um, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart. And it, the tune sounds like this. So we'll show the places. We may use chopsticks again this week just because the places are so close together. But we'll start with South Central Asia, Asia, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia. North Vietnam, South Vietnam, South Central Asia, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia. North Vietnam, South Vietnam. And that is how we will cover our geography. To that tune, we'll point, may let them fill them in if on their laminated maps with different colors this week. And then we'll first color each spot in with a different color then as we're singing it. And then as we sing it the next time, we'll erase each of the colors with our fingers. That may be a good option. Another fun idea 
that may be good for next week, but I'll throw it out because it's something that I've been kind of thinking about. We have this huge map uh, that's kind of like, it's a tapestry, but it is like as big as a wall. And because of that, you can see these places a little bit bigger. And so I could bring this out so that they could see South Central Asia, Asia a little bit closer. Um, that is an idea. If you have like a big map like that, this might be a good week and next week because there are going to be small locations for next week too, just to break that out and let them see it on a bigger scale, uh, just how grand our world is and uh, where these places are in comparison to all the countries and places that we've been learning so far prior to this week. All right, so that is South Central Asia. Uh, last week, I thought it was a good idea to kind of share this at this point, but if you are interested in adding some fun foods to try out this week as you're learning about South Central Asia, I usually put this at the end of my videos, but um, this week, some of them are obvious, maybe, but we love pho. That's like a noodle soup in like a chicken or pork broth or vegetable broth. Uh, they use noodles and you can add vegetables or meat to it. Very, very yummy. Um, you put sprouts on there and cilantro and lime and hot sauce if you want to. It's super yummy. So that would be something that would represent um, Vietnamese food. Thailand, obviously, Pad Thai, uh, or even something like a curry dish, like a red curry or a yellow curry over rice with some kind of shrimp or chicken or some kind of meat in there. Or if you wanted to do something from Laos, you could do like sticky rice. Uh, so many fun ideas, but those are some things that might be fun to kind of bring geography to life this week if you are able to and um, willing to try some new fun things. Those are some ideas. All right, next we have science. And I think that's the last thing for memory work this week, but what is the second law of thermodynamics? The second law of thermodynamics is also known as the law of entropy, which says that heat flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. So as we state this and chant it out, we basically bring our voices from high to low. So um, the second law of thermodynamics states that heat flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. Uh, it could be higher over here and lower over here. Wherever the heat is, it's going to flow to an area of lower temperature. And we just show that with our hands and with the depth of our voices. So again, heat flows from an area of higher temperature to an area of lower temperature. And that is how we're going to cover our science. All right, I think that is all of the memory work. For review this week, uh, we are going to either play Jenga. I have to have to fill out kind of where our energy level is in class this week, but we'll either play Jenga where we take out, push the pieces and the blocks, and each block has a subject that we're going to review on it. And then we will answer that question before they put that block back on top. Or we may do stickers this week. And basically what that is is where uh, the kids will pick a subject out of a hat, or you could have them roll a die to pick the subject where you assign each number to a subject, but they'll pick their subject out of a container. That subject is what we will review and then we'll break into teams. I should have said that first, break into teams and then you'll answer that, that review question as a team. But then everybody on the team gets to pick a sticker. By the end of the class, everybody ends up with a ton of stickers, but especially these littles that I'm with this year, stickers are just a really fun thing. And so um, that may be what we do this week, kind of have to fill that out. All right, so that is review. For some ideas of things to watch this week that are related to our memory work, Magic School Bus has two videos. One is about entr entropy and one is a science experiment, but it's season three, episode two, and season three, episode four. Both of those are related to our science this week. And then for a movie, like a family movie, Blubber, is a movie that is related to our second law of thermodynamics. And so that is an option that you could consider uh, viewing this week. For fine arts this week, it's Beethoven. And um, there is a great video out there on YouTube that has lots of great visuals, music playing behind it, and it is really well narrated about Beethoven. And so I will put a link to that below this video so you can check that out. 
to either view as a community or even at home if you don't do community together. That's a fantastic video and it covered a lot of ground. You're, I love a video for something like this because you can hear all the instruments and um, the different sounds and things that they that they're describing about that person's life at, during each time and season. And so uh, this week was a great one that had some good videos out there. So I will link the one that we used below this video. And then for our indescribable devotions this week, there are a couple that could be relatable. For week 20, we're doing the straw bridge in science, um, testing weight and strength. And so there is a devotion in indescribable page 42 that relates to that particular science experiment that we're working on this week. And then if we wanted to do a net, an additional one in this week, page 132 is about, look out, it's gonna blow. So both of those could be good options for devotions this week. Remember your old world, world echoes portions for week 20. Those are always great reading sources, poems and things like that. And then another read aloud that you could do this week is Who Was Hindenburg? And that's from the Who Was series. So lots of great information and ideas of things to incorporate into our school this week. I hope that this is helpful. And if you have any questions, as usual, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, I'm happy to help however or if I can. And I look forward to seeing you all next week for week 21. Bye.